Well, that wall of water also struck at a train that was going down one of the coastal lines in Sri Lanka. And uh, it, uh, passengers didn't really stand a chance on this train as the wave of wall of water simply engulfed the whole, enveloped the whole of this train as it was going down the track. It is thought that maybe as many as a thousand people have died in this single incident in this whole disaster and Sky's Ashish Joshi is in Sri Lanka and he's been taking a look now at the horror of the train disaster. This is all that's left of the Gaul Express, a smashed piece of wood and metal. There were eight carriages in total and each one was packed. It was Boxing Day and a Buddhist bank holiday. Entire families were together. You can see the children's toys. The seafront is about 300 metres in that direction. From there came a giant wall of water, sweeping through here, destroying everything in its path. It hit that train like a bomb. For 1,300 people on board, they didn't stand a chance. It took a matter of seconds. This twisted rail track shows how much force this wave had steel twisted like a silk ribbon. The stench of rotting flesh hangs heavy in the air and every hour more bodies are pulled from the wreckage. This makeshift morgue fills up quickly. Relatives come to identify the dead. It's a grim task, but they have to know one way or another for sure if one of these bodies is the person they're looking for. This man's been looking for his fiance. He says, I wasn't sure she was on this train, but I've just found her slippers. This woman's been looking for her brother-in-law. He was working in the buffet car. And this man is looking for his nephew. He says the government hasn't done enough to help. The police are working as fast as they can to recover the bodies, but they're simply overwhelmed. They admit they're struggling to cope. Our main problem is we can remove this uh, uh, compartment, railway compartment. We have no machineries at present. We have uh, made requests to send some machineries. The Japanese company has agreed to send the vehicle, but so far we didn't get any assistance. The army, police, and the civilian and the Navy Air Force also here to assist us to remove the bodies. The sheer concentration of this devastation is hard to believe. So many dead in such a short space of time. But as these pictures show, it can and it did happen. Ashish Joshi, Sky News, Perelia. Ashish joins us now live on the video phone from Sri Lanka. Evening, Ashish. I guess this single incident of this train that was overwhelmed by the water describes vividly just how suddenly this disaster struck. It's really hard to imagine. The railway track is about 300 metres from the seashore. Now, that wave would have come in sweeping away everything, including buildings. And we're not talking about little shacks. We're talking about two-storey concrete buildings. And it would have hit this train with so much force that it sent eight carriages flying in totally different directions. All that's left now is a wrangle of metal and wood. You saw the tracks in those pictures there. They're lifted up off the ground, about 25 foot high in the air. And they're twisted like bits of plastic. Now, there are bodies everywhere. Now, they're quickly decomposing. They've been there for two days already. But as you heard, the emergency services simply can't cope. They say they have the manpower, but what they don't have are the tools to cut through the metal to get these bodies out. The problem is perpetuated by the fact that they're so badly decomposed that the people who come to claim their loved ones can't recognize them. Ashish, I presume there is a very serious risk now of disease spreading in this area. Most of the fresh water in the smaller villages is contaminated. When we drove through the southern coast belt earlier this afternoon, we were being stopped, we were being approached 
by local villagers, people who have nothing now, and what they wanted was some of our mineral water. They're desperate. They need access to mineral water. They need access to medicine. Jeremy, from where I'm standing, I can see two Navy warships, Indian warships, which have arrived, we think, earlier today, all afternoon. They've had their Lynx helicopters coming in and out of Gulf, dropping off, we think, medical supplies. So the supplies are reaching the island. Now they have to reach the people who need them most.